hello there, sorry. Let's switch off my fan. Oh, it's getting quite warm in here. Hello. Hi. You might be following my channel, you might be subscribed to my channel, but you might not have seen me in a while. I'm really sorry about the glare of the lights. I've got to have them on for when I'm actually eventually doing my project. So I thought I'd pop on. I've just been on my Facebook um, channel over on Facebook. Same channel name, Stampin' Star Creations. Hi Deborah. hi Jeannie. Do say hello as you come on so it reassures me that you're here watching and do comment, hello, uh, comment along. Um, it's nice to have questions or if you want to make a comment that's fine. In fact what I might do is switch off the light so you can see what I'm making. So today I'm going to show you how to make a mini um, lampshade using vellum. Now vellum is a kind of thick tracing paper so you might not have come across it before so that's what it is it's sort of like you know that baking sheet you might find in the kitchen but a bit thicker some people use it for different kinds of crafting um, there's lots of different things you can do with it now stamping up um, sell like slightly thicker vellum so it's not as flimsy as your baking sheet it's a bit thicker so you can cut it and emboss on it and do things like that so i can see people coming on it's great to see you do say hello lovely to see you deborah and Janice and Jenny all the way from Australia. It's lovely to have your company. So I'm gonna switch off the lights. Um, no, it's not gonna make a difference to, um, unless I switch off the other one. Let's switch off the big light just briefly, excuse me. And then hopefully, bear with me, I'll be able to show you my glowing lampshade. Okay, I'm gonna go and switch the lights back on. And whilst I'm really not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. So um, these little mini lampshades, not my original idea, I saw it um, online I think a while ago and I saved the idea because years ago I made something similar so it was nice to revisit it. Hi there from West Virginia. Um, so yeah, I did a class a few weeks ago um, with vellum, just with vellum, showing my customers and um, my clients what you can do with vellum because there's actually quite a lot you can do with it. So tonight I'm going to show you how to do these mini lampshades and here's the other one that I made. Now the darker the colours, the obviously the more it will show up. And these I've used with pastel colours just to go with whatever home decor I've got. So bear that in mind, bear in mind where you might want to put your little lampshade and um, bear in mind what colours you want to use. You can use any stamp set with it, use what you've got, use what you like. So. This is just a cheapy wine glass that I got in a local shop. Um, Deborah says she loves the frosted look of the vellum. Yeah, it just adds that something special and it's so easy to do, but I think it's really effective. And just one of these cheapy tea light candles as well. So I wouldn't suggest using a real tea light because I don't want any fires. I don't want to be responsible for any fires. So without further ado, I'm going to try and turn you around and we'll get started. Do excuse the look, it's the end of the day makeup's come off <laughs> okay and um i'm just got my new stand so do bear with me if there's any wobbles okay you can zoom in a little bit okay there's a bit of glare so what you need for your vellum lampshade in part from your glass and your tea light is a piece of printed vellum with a template on so i googled mini lampshade template and it gave me a template and once I've put it into um, Word I then expanded it so it would fit half well not even half of an A4 sheet bit bigger so it'd fill the space on the sheet and that seemed to be the perfect size for what I needed it for. Yes it did cut off the end but I can just talk you through that boo-boo. So I think today I'm going to be using Sea of Textures. I've just used it over on my Facebook Live and I'm going to use it again because I've got all this, just cleaned off all the stamps and I thought, oh, I could sit one of these in the bathroom. So if you want some su to suggest some colours, so I want some corally colours, some sea colours, then I'll incorporate them into today's project. So do show out some colours and I'm going to use these stamps to stamp our lampshade. So do let me know what colours you want. I'm thinking maybe a nice coral colour and maybe um, colours for the the leaves and the seaweed and stuff. Coastal Cabana, balmy blue, two colours I can reach. So you want maybe some strong colours 
so that they'll show up, remember. So any more suggestions? Maybe a corally colour for some of the coral and maybe, should we do a Mr Octopus in this one as well? Let me know. If you don't know any of the Sample Up colours, don't worry, just shout out um, a colour you might like. Hi Sharon, great to see you. Calypso Coral. Got a nice new Calypso Coral. Great. Ooh. Got that on my table. They're fun colours. Um, oh dear, Laurie's been having electric flash from the storm. Doesn't sound good. So should we have a purple octopus? How about that? Or we could have purple coral. <laughs> now, just bear in mind that when you wrap your um, shade, it will obviously go in a concave, no, convex, that's right, um, shape. So we're thinking purple octopus, are we? I can do a purple octopus, so that's no problem. Now, just about fits on this block here. That's the D block. So I might be able to fit through. Let's see if we can fit three on and maybe. How many octopus should we have? Let's do one central one and then we've got space to put some other things. So just bear in mind that when you are stamping on vellum, just give it some time to adhere to the vellum. In fact, I might just bring on my um, piercing mat. This just gives me a nice flat surface for when I'm stamping. Um, it will, it does, it's not as porous as, say, when you're stamping on paper. So just bear that in mind. Let's bring on some of these nice shaded colours. So I'm going to go in with Coastal Cabana. Now I'm going to dip each time rather than um, stamping off too much so that the colours do show up on the vellum and they don't disappear. I'm just going to turn my work so I can stamp accordingly. Okay, let's get some coral in here, nice fun colours, so I wouldn't have even thought to use a C kind of um, scene for, for a lampshade but it's quite fun to use this stamp set for this, it just completely changes the look of what you're doing doesn't it? Now look, I can extend that coral up a bit. Can you see that? No, you can't see it because I'm slightly off picture. So I just kept stamping up and up and up. Okay. Um, let's see what we what haven't we used? We could put some lay down some netting. So just be careful not to smudge your ink, it would be very easy to do, but just bear that in mind when you're doing your stamping. quite fun shape to work with because you're not stamping on a flat surface and you're stamping on a different material so it's quite fun to use something a bit different. Uh, what haven't I used? Let's have a look. Okay, let's introduce some more of that purple. I'm going to use this little corally one here. Sorry I'm missing did you print the pattern onto the vellum? Yes, I did. I printed it straight from the computer onto the vellum. Uh, Sharon says that will fit in with her Florida look. Just turned in from SC. Took my mum back after a visit with us in WA State. Welcome, Cindy. Lovely to see you. I'm going to put a little bit more of this. Oh, these colours together. 
Looking good, people. I'll stick some behind here. Not too much, but just want an element of that purple coming through. And I'm going to revisit those long pieces of seaweed. And I am going to give it a blast with the heat tool so that we're not here for ages watching it dry. <laughs> so again, just think about the direction that the lampshade is going in. And it's easier to just turn your project with you, depending on what you're working on. It's so cheerful, says Beverly. It is. Really fun colours. And I just can't believe how different it can look depending on what stamp to use as well. It can completely change the look of your lampshade. And also, when by the time it's put together, it changes as well. So, forgive the noise. But I'm just going to grab my heat tool so that I can get this heated and dried. The octopus look like, looks like he's had a bash on the head, but um, <laughs> we'll work with it. Poor chap. You can blast it, which I'll do in a sec, um, but just be careful to move, keep moving the heat tool over because you don't want your vellum to crinkle. You're just using it to aid the drying of the ink. Now we found when I did this in class, some inks seem to like to stay on the surface a lot longer than others. Don't know why, don't know if it's just the makeup of the ink. Um, it does dry eventually. But just be careful if you're one of these people that are prone to knocking or smudging ink. Just take your time with it. Enjoy it. There's no uh, rush. Now, what I should do, and if I was sensible, is to try and make this file available on my blog. So um, I'll try my best to get that done tomorrow so that if people actually want this... Um, PDF they can. So Deborah saying love this would be gorgeous with butterflies. Yeah, great idea. Butterflies would look fab. Um the setting on my heat gun Bev is asking, it's on number one at the moment, which is actually plenty because it's it's doing the trick, it's actually drying drying the ink. So normally I blast it with two. <laughs> because I just want to get it done. I'm not very patient. Janice says, this is beautiful. I've resisted that stamp set, but you may have made me cave in. And Deborah says, could you use a blend to colour in his boo-boo? <gasps> what a great idea. I have got a blend of that colour. So this stamp set, I must be honest, I've actually borrowed it off my sister. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Highland Pepper. Why do I don't have gorgeous grape for some reason? I've got Highland Heather. Let's have a look at the... Or Rich Razzleberry, which is a completely different colour. I could do it on the other side, couldn't I? I might just turn him over. So the other thing I was going to say is if you want to get the excess ink off, turn it over and just rub it down on a sheet. I might just add a little bit of colour on the back side of the paper, on the other side. <laughs> really giving me a boo-boo now, haven't I? So anyway, once you've coloured in or stamped and dried off your vellum sheet, this is the bit that I can't fast forward, I'm just gonna have to chat to you. Um, then you're ready to just cut out your, your template. Now you want to cut, I suggest cutting after you've stamped so that you've got um, space to stamp over the edge of your template. It doesn't matter if you go over the edge so much. And then when it comes to cutting out, you want to cut away the um, marks, the stitch marks from the template because they do show up when you put your shade together. Go on, ask me how I know. Ask me, I dare you. <laughs> um, so Again, don't be too hasty. Take your time with it. It's not too bad to cut, just keep following the curve around. Now you will notice on this particular template there's a mark there and there's a mark there. So that's just where the vellum gets folded around and stuck down.
So these make great little home decor pieces. Um, really easy and fun to make. And when the ladies came to do it in the class, they each made something different. They chose their own colours, their own stamps and designed it how they wanted to. So it was really nice to see the kind of unique ideas that people can come up with. And, you know, doing something that maybe suits your own home decor or if you're gifting it, you can do what you like. See, I've cut two. I've cut on the line rather than cutting away the line. Sorry, I'm just going back to try and cut that off. Um, I've got a bald spot, yeah. Christmas themed would be decorative gift for this season. Absolutely, doing a. You can have. I'm, I'm envisaging like two on the mantelpiece, or you know, you can have one in the window, or like I said, this one could go in the bathroom or something, or even in the child's room. That'd be quite fun. Maybe like um, you could do like a galaxy type one. So once you've cut your template out, it doesn't matter which side you actually lay your tear and tape on. So this is um, stamping up double sided tape. So I'm just going to lay it down on the edge. And the great thing about it is you can just tear it. It's strong tape, but you just tear it off, press it down and lift off the backing. And now that's sticky on that side and ready. <laughs> can you see it's sticky and ready to stick? So just loop it round like a cone, like a cone of shame. <laughs> and then just carefully... Bring those two together. Now where it kind of misprinted, it actually matched all right that time. But if if you've got a bit hanging off the edge, you can just get your scissors and snip the that bit off. Uh, Janice says you can heat emboss on vellum too. I'm thinking silver snowflakes. <gasps> That'd be so pretty, wouldn't it? That would have been a neat idea. He does look like he's got a boo-boo poor thing, but there you go. There's our sea themed lampshade and I'm going to show you ones I've made earlier. So this is using the Beautiful You stamp set. So somebody, one of my ladies used the skeleton leaves from the Rooted in Nature stamp set and that looked gorgeous as well. And I had people using the daisies. Um, this one's using colourful seasons, so bringing down the branches and just stamping those blossoms all over. So look, they're all so different and yet um, really great fun, really easy to do. Switch my tea light back on and let's see what it looks like on the on the lampshade. There you go, look. And you might even have a spare wine glass at home. Um, I could use it. People are concerned about my poor little octopus. <laughs> yes, um, a boss thing. I mean, even, I wonder, actually, should we do that now? Should we do a bit of, I'm wondering about embossing the rim. That might just complete the look. Should we try that? Um... As I have my heat tool going, we can try it. It might be a bit late to do it now, but let's, we never know till we try to do it. So I'm going to use some gold because of, I don't know, gold treasure. Isn't it? And I'm going to push the base of my lamp into the verse mark like so. all the way around let's go really quickly again and see if we can get a bit of gold going on so that has actually adhered to that just shall we try it out? Let's have a look. So I'm going to set the heat tool to the highest. As soon as it heats, I'm going to keep it moving along. I don't know, I think it's, hopefully you can see that. Oh, 
wow. That's made it look so classy. I love it. What a great suggestion. Right, I'm going to try the top half. Try not to spill my embossing powder everywhere. Right, I'm going to dab in the top half. I'm just going to press in the whole thing like that. Oh, thank you for the suggestion. Was that Janice? Somebody said about embossing. So you could just do the rim or you could, you know, stamp and emboss. But that just makes it look even more uh, luxurious, shall we say. Do you mind your fingers, the heat tool gets very hot. You don't want to crinkle your vellum. So just keep it moving around until it's heated. Wait a second. Oh wow. Oops. Oops. That is so cool. It looks like a really expensive piece of kit, doesn't it? I love it. What do you guys think? Do you think the embossing just really adds to the overall effect? <laughs> Brilliant. Great stuff. Now. Had I thought about it, I could have done some splatters, but <laughs> I won't keep you any longer. I've kept you on for 20 minutes and I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a really fun um, live. Now bear with me as I tilt um, this to my face and hopefully my stand is having a little bit of issues because it's perched. Let me just switch off some of the lighting so it's not too glary. The embossing just set it off, didn't it, Deborah? Yeah, that's what I I think. It just adds that je ne sais quoi. I think that's the right words. <laughs> so hopefully you can see that. Doesn't like to focus, does it? So it does just literally sit on the top. You can't force it on or... I suppose if you really wanted to, you can maybe put some glue dots or some way of actually securing it in place. But it does just look, you know, and you can change it over. I can change it for something else. I might go putting embossing on all of them now. I like that idea. Maybe a bit of silver emboss on that one. So thanks ever so much for joining me. Um, I do Facebook Lives every Tuesday, so you can join me over there. If not, you can follow me on my YouTube channel. I have videos coming out weekly, and um, I do other videos throughout the month also. So thank you once again. Take care. Do subscribe. Do press the bell button for notifications. Hope you have a good day wherever you are. Mwah. Take care. Goodbye.